we're gonna see. The four of them. That's good. That's so good. Um, <coughs> we're gonna open the meeting. Uh, this is a continued public hearing. The Board of Appeals of the Town of Chelmsford will hold a public hearing on Thursday, January 10th, 2019 at the Town Offices, 50 Billerica <coughs> Road, room 204, to hear requests for special permits, variances, and other appeals. This meeting is being televised by Chelmsford Telemedia. Our first hearing tonight is 9 Rogers Road, the estate of Phyllis Clark. And we have an attorney speaking for us. Yeah, good evening. My name is Greg Aladino, here for the Clark <coughs> family. And we were here before you last month, and um, I guess I just want to clarify a couple things after the discussion we had about what this is and what this isn't. We filed two uh, petitions. One was an administrative appeal of the building inspector's denial of our permit application for the subject property, and then we also put in an application for a variance. But setting aside the variance, all we addressed last time and what we'd like to address now is just the question of the administrative appeal. We're not asking for relief from an, uh, an undersized lot. We've seen the board last meeting. We saw how you reacted to people asking for variances on the basis of a hardship claimed where the lot is undersized. That's not what we're doing. We're not creating a new lot. This lot has um, existed for some 70 years. It's an existing lot with its separate identity and it's now separately owned. Our position has been that it is grandfathered and that the board has the authority to issue a building permit in the context of this administrative appeal. So we're not looking for relief because we split up an existing lot and each is undersigned. We're just looking for an existing lot that's been in a separate chain of title, separate identity, separate bills, and it's now no longer owned commonly with another parcel. And at this point, um, we believe it's up to the board to decide whether they want to overrule the building inspector. Now, prior in building inspector, we had dealt with, and um, I think ultimately the Denial was now issued by Mr. Shanahan, but what we're looking for is just a decision that a building permit should issue. We're not setting a precedent by splitting up a lot, asking for variances for the smaller lots. We're just asking to respect what has been existing for some 70 years. And at this point, if Mr. Clark, the personal representative of the estate, could address the board, he, he might like to make a few final statements for you. Certainly. <coughs> So my name is Alan Clark. I'm the personal representative for my, my mother's estate. I'm not a lawyer. I understand <coughs> we have lawyers here today. Uh, my argument is not going to be, be legal. I don't, I don't think that's the purpose of, of this board. Uh, that would be the purpose of the court. Uh, what, we're <coughs> what my family is asking is, is simply relief uh, from a mistake that my father and mother made. Uh, that put us in this boat. So in 1946, this land was subdivided and this particular lot <coughs> uh, became, became a lot. In 1953, my parents purchased the lot ad adjacent to it. Um, and then they built a house and then uh, my family's lived in that home for 63 years. And then last year we, we sold that to an unrelated uh, party. Can we refer to that as lot B then? Perfect. <laughs> it's actually lot 11. But A lot 11? Okay, I'm good yeah, with that. We'll call it 11. In 1954, uh, zoning in the, for this, the district where this subdivision exists, changed. And, and at that point in time, the lots within this subdivision uh, no longer conform to the current zoning. So they were, they were undersized at that time. Uh, but although undersized, they, they were uh, <clears throat> and didn't conform to current zoning, they were, they were certainly buildable at that point. In 1972, uh, my grandmother sells Nine Rogers Road, the subject of, of, of why we're here this evening. Uh, <coughs> Uh, to my parents, and certainly at that time, it doesn't conform to current zoning, uh, but it's it's it's, <laughs> it's buildable. In 19 so that's in 1972. In 1975, 
the the state en enacts new uh, uh, new zoning rules that essentially states that if uh, two adjoining lots are owned in common ownership, they automatically merge uh, in an effort to either make them conforming or or not conforming. But the law recognizes that uh, uh, that there were there were lots like this particular lot that. Uh, <clears throat> that was non-conforming, owned in the same ownership as a lot number 11, and uh, in, in the wisdom of the legislators, they provided relief that <clears throat> from the time of 1975, when the law was enacted, until January 1, 1981, there was the ability to uh, change ownership in one of in one of those one of those lots, so that they weren't still common lots, <coughs> and and then they, therefore they would be grandfathered, provided they were 7,500 square feet in size, and had 75 feet of road frontage. Uh, this particular lot, Nine Rogers Road, exceeds the 7,500 square feet and the 75 feet of road road frontage. Had uh, my ta my parents sometime between when this law took effect in 1975 and January 1st, 1981, uh, deeded it either to to one of their children or all of their children or to a third party, uh, we wouldn't be standing here. That that lot would be grandfathered uh, for the purposes of of building. <coughs> I think it's important to to recognize that this we're not creating a lot. This lot exists. It's it's <clears throat> clearly owned in third party uh, from from the uh, where the home is located. And it's it's my understanding that it's you know it's the purpose of the ZBA to offer relief to property owners where the the literal interpretation of either the law, the ordinance, or the regulations. Uh, is just not proper. And so that's what we're here for. We're here for, for you to grant relief. Uh, if we assume that these lots legally merged because my parents uh, did not deed Nine Rogers Road to, uh, to somebody else, it, it, it's clear that the ZBA has the authority uh, to grant relief by advising the, the, the town to issue a building permit. Again, I think it's important that what we're asking for is not, <clears throat> is not to create a new lot, not to waive setbacks, not to request a variance. It's simply recognizing that had my parents deeded this lot in question to one of the children prior to 1981, uh, we wouldn't be here. Allowing a home to be built on this lot is the, is the correct thing uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, certainly that was always the intent of my, my parents. Uh, it clearly was an error on their part. They were just common people. Uh, my mother was a teacher for the town of Chelmsford for over 30 years. Uh, my father worked in a foundry. Uh, they're not real estate moguls. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't understand uh, the ramifications of, of that law uh, that was passed in 1975. The lot in question has always been a separate legal lot. When the, the town extended the sewer along Rogers Road, the, the town in anticipation of a home being built on that lot uh, <clears throat> provided a, a connection. The lot has always been assessed as a separate lot. It shows up on the, on the tax map as a, as a separate lot. I believe that if, if, if a single family home was built on that lot, it will enhance the value of, of the homes in the area. Unfortunately, in the past, it's become somewhat of a dumping ground for the, for the neighbors. Uh, if a home was, was allowed to be built on this lot, it would also allow uh, any drain issue, drainage issues that may exist from this lot in our butter uh, to be addressed. And I guess it allows the estate of my mother to finally to be settled. You know, we're not real estate speculators. 
Uh, my family has lived in that home for over 63 years. My family have been active members in the community. Several of them have been employees on and off. And I, I respectfully request that you grant us relief <coughs> and allow us to build on this lot. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I think we've gone over this and had a, a refresher there. Um, what, is, what is the thought here? Uh, one uh, do you do you have specific things you'd like to talk about with this, Paul? Are you here for? Well, you you have the letter that yeah. I had written uh, back in March of 2018. I do. Right. Um, and my determination is that the the lots do merge. Um, the merger doctrine is applicable because they're currently well, they were held mm -hmm. in common ownership at the time that I had written the letter and had been in common ownership dating back to the 1970s at least. Um, and under the Preston versus Board of Appeals of Hull case. Um, it doesn't matter that the, if the lots had been held in separate ownership at the time of the zoning change, you look at at any time after the zoning changed, did the lots ever come into common ownership? And if it, they did, then they merged for zoning purposes. So in my opinion, they had merged, they continue to be merged, and the only way that that lot can be a buildable lot is if a variance is granted. There's no other relief that this board can grant um, outside of the issuance of a variance that would allow this to be a buildable lot. <clears throat> so can we look because I realize this is an administrative appeal uh, and what that means as far as relief so if we granted we're offering relief do we have an envelope for that site it, up an application. so th this is a request it's an administrative appeal and there was a variance request as well correct oh, okay. so, well, on the administrative, administrative appeal side uh, um, you know the, the board has the ability to disregard um, the opinion that I provided and overturn the decision of the building commissioner um, and order the issuance of a building permit, make a determination that, in fact, the lots have not merged. Um, so we, right, that's. That, that's, you know, ultimately, this board is the board that makes that determination upon a, an administrative appeal. still having the public hearing open like this? at this point yeah yeah I'm not sure uh, if you have other questions someone else would like to speak they're welcome to certainly sir I was here the last time my name is Austin Rawls I live on 64 Dunstable Road I'm a butter and uh, my land out back that abuts their land is very very wet and there's been fill put in on because there's they have uh, like a drop of uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 feet down, and they've been filling that, which was all right, except they filled it in so far that there's a, there's a uh, there was a, a, there's a spring there. That I think it emanates from uh, Freeman Pond, and it finally the, gets the there. The bottom of the pond over there. And there's a spring there, and it goes uh, into a little brook that their father, Bernie, used to keep cleared out, and that would go around my property and go out <coughs> into a culvert into the sewer system. But that has been covered over the last years with this fill, and I'm worried about any other building there that is gonna, it's going to be worse. What I did on my property, I did, dug like a four-foot ditch, put crushed rock and, and perforated pipe in the middle of my yard to go into that brook, if you would call it that, to drain it. And it does, like if, you, if any of you have been up by there in the last month, you would have seen a pond in my backyard every time it gets a heavy rain, it ponds. You got a lot of rain. But because of my drain, the thing I put in, it drains out. But the back part where it got filled in where that brook used to be there, now it works its way down, and that stays a lot wetter all winter, all summer. I have a hard time getting out there with a lawnmower. So, but I'm still not clear. And I think they're, you're asking for, they're asking for a permit. Uh, it's different from a variance. So. Uh, I guess I'm talking about I wouldn't they, agree to a variance to build. They're challenging the decision of the building inspector, Mr. Dupel, earlier, and Mr. Havity, as the town attorney, has backed up his decision, feeling that the uh, the letter was written correctly and it was denied correctly. So they're asking that that be overturned, not that the uh, 
characteristics of the site be adjusted by a variance or a special permit? We're looking at the, at this point, we're looking at the uh, administrative appeal. Okay, so, and then there'll be another one, I guess, for a variance? Is, is that what? They, they could proceed, <laughs> yes, yes. If, if so they were that, unsuccessful. that would be my, where I would object to that point. In doing yep, that. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone like, else like to speak? Make this quick. I'm trying not to repeat myself from the last couple of times. My name is Charles I know we've, LaRosa. Yeah, I just am trying to. I know. Thank you very much. I'm at 60 Dunstall Road. Right. Yeah, if I can just approach. Is that? Sure. sure. Um, so my property is here. The deceiving thing about this picture is about right here on that lot is where it starts to drop. So, I mean, we're talking this much of the lot right now that you could maybe build on <coughs> unless there's more fill put in, which is what Mr. Rawls was saying. The creek that used to run behind here used to run all the way that's already filled in if we start putting in more fill so that so again that's my point now Ten foot drop. from there down is a considerable drop it's this amount that's built yeah, that, right those now. are gradient lines there that, that define okay. that pretty well so that's I don't want to keep on beating on the clocks they're a nice family we just it, it's not a buildable lot and I think most of the neighborhood agrees with that thank you very much okay thank you No, I'd just like to, to oh, go ahead. I was just going to, uh, a question for town council, Bruce Clark, um, 30 Shalmont Court. Um, just going back to the old um, case in, in Ipswich, the Adamwitz case from yep, 1985. Case. I'm just curious, what happened with that case so, and so that ruling? Prior to that point in time, the, the thought process was that with regards to the application of the merger doctrine, that you took a snapshot <coughs> at the time that the lots were brought, uh, I'm sorry, at the time the zoning changed. You looked at whether or not the, the lots were in common ownership, and if they weren't, then moving forward, it didn't matter if they subsequently came into common ownership. But that decision was essentially overturned by the Preston versus Board of, Hull, Board of Appeals of Hull case, okay, which, which said it doesn't matter when they come into common ownership. Mm -hmm. If at any point the lots come into con common ownership, the merger doctrine is applicable. Um, which I don't necessarily agree that was the correct holding, but that is what the applicable law is as of right now. So, so under that original court case, we would have been okay? Correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I, just, I just want to uh, <coughs> clarify a couple of things. So we're, we're not here, we're not, we're not arguing at all town council's opinion. Um, despite our attorney saying we're, we're, we're giving up rights of, of appealing to a court. Uh, my read of it is I would, I would agree uh, with town council that, that unfortunately they merged. We're here asking, asking for you to, uh, <clears throat> to grant relief uh, because of the circumstances and, uh, and also in an effort to be able to address uh, the drainage concerns. And uh, of course, we're only going to do that if we're allowed to. And I will point out that the, uh, the town of Chelmsford did, did issue to my father a building permit to fill that lot. So it wasn't done illegally. It was done. And it did not fill in the brook. The, the fill doesn't go anywhere near that brook. Um, so uh, I don't know what their expertise is as, as, uh, as, as a builder. Uh, but I have some experience in building, and that lot is buildable, but that's not why we're here. The question is, before you, is not, is it physically buildable? We're asking you to overturn uh, <clears throat> the building inspector's uh, decision based on the fact that it is the equitable and right thing to do and nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any further comment? Seeing none, make a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close. Are we okay with our numbers here? Uh, yeah, you got, you got five. Yeah. But do we have five that's heard at yeah. all? Yeah, she was here the last time. I wasn't. Well, you were Not last, last month. Okay. No. You still have four. You have to be, a, you could advise them it's four. So we're going to need a unanimous decision to overturn this. I, I would recommend reopening the public hearing. Uh, Apologize. To reopen the public hearing and asking the applicant if they would. I closed it. Like to continue this, give um, 
Mr. Corotta, the opportunity to review the record and sign the Mullen statement. Could I have a motion as Should such? We open the public hearing. Never closed it. We only started. <laughs> we didn't yeah, we, you only had a motion. Yeah, yeah, we only had a, We never closed it. We don't need. Sorry, I thought it was okay. no. All right, so the public hearing is still open. Yeah, it is. So you can ask the question. Now, now you can ask him if the four, or if he wants to continue and have Mark re review. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know they're discussing them. Assuming this. If we had four yes votes, we'll. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be challenging. Um, oh, you didn't watch the video. Okay. I wasn't. I wasn't asked to. Oh, on the decision um, to overturn the, the building inspector's need a super determination, majority. it doesn't require a supermajority. You only need three votes. Um, for a variance, you would need four votes. Okay. Okay. So that clarifies. Yeah. We'll take our chances. You take a chance. Okay. We, we, just, we, we trust that three of three of the four that can vote at least will, will do the equitable. Okay. So now can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second, Second to that. By Charlie. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> take this up. I, uh, I, I really I, I can't uh, support overturning. Boy, uh, you know the the I can't uh, overturn it. I can't see that's the right thing to do. I understand your problem. Uh, I, I think it's a difficult lot, but I'm not I'm not focusing on that at all. It's just I just don't think I can overturn the decision that I think is right. Um, why don't I make a motion in the affirmative and start it off? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, administrative appeal for nine Rogers Road. No discussion. <coughs> oh, any uh, more discussion? So. No. Tell me what you're thinking. Apparently I don't know enough. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm thinking, too. To I echo you. Sorry, Brian. I just didn't want to cut things off at the, uh, at the pass. Yeah. yeah I don't think right. I'm I'll, I'll redo my motion. I'll make a motion to approve the administrative appeal, uh, administrative appeal for 9 Rogers Road. Oh, okay. oh second. Oh, second. Okay. second. I'll second well, well, the motion. You're voting to We're voting to, 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 to do what? Voting to approve. So, so you always yes, want to do an overturn affirmative. To overturn the Are we doing that one? You're voting in <coughs> you're voting to overturn yes. the decision? Well I I've, I've made a motion. You're supposed to vote into the affirmative, affirmative. Of the application. You told them. Which well, is the well but the application <laughs> is asking you to Overturn. Overturn the decision. So affirmative is so a yes vote overturns the decision. And a no, no vote, vote does would not. Deny right. Right. Exactly. Right. right. So what is your motion? Make sure you're voting on the right thing. Of course. The motion says to approve. So if you feel it should be approved, you would vote yes. Okay. And that would overturn the decision. So the motion is to overturn the yes. building. Uh, In the legal opinion. The yes. building commissioner's decision. Okay. You still second it. I will second the motion. Okay. Okay, so who votes in favor of overturning the decision? Seeing none, who votes in opposition to uh, overturning the building inspector's decision? Correct. Four zero. It's unanimous. Unanimous. Motion fails. Thank you for your time. We so appreciate you. it. I, I know you're in a very difficult so position. So that, that still leaves the variance application unresolved? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you going to move forward we're on gonna, that? We're going to withdraw it. I mean, there's the chances of getting a variance if you won't, if you won't overturn this one to none. Just can't see. Any, I mean, any, my, any my only comment on that would be, you know, the decision is strictly on the legal <laughs> issues of whether or not the the lots merged. Variance is a completely separate analysis. I'm not inclined one way or the other to to guess how the board would vote, but I, I do see them as completely separate. We need all four. You would need all four if you agree to a continuance. Um, board member Kuroda can review the records and actually be eligible to vote at the next uh, year. It's just, it is what it is. Is it something going through the legislature that you don't need all four anymore? To eliminate the, the Mullen rule? Yeah. I'm not aware. Okay, I thought there was. I'm going to ask for a continuation. <coughs> okay, so uh, that is a closing hearing. <coughs> We're going to open the, or continue the 9 Rogers so, Road. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What are we going oh. for? I just want to. They're definitely an I, I'm not sure where we are with regards no, we, to the 100 day period. The last meeting, we never opened the variance. It was it continued. So you, so you could vote on it tonight. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so there was no 
evidence taken on no. that. So just we, ne we never opened it. They wanted to just address the board needs to be aware that you know it's a hundred day period from when the application is filed to when you have to act on a variance. Okay. Okay. And so where are we? You, where are um, we with that? This would just days? be opening the variance tonight, so you can okay. sit on it. So it would be opened. We can uh, accept the motion to withdraw without prejudice. You can accept and a motion to withdraw. Apply. You can 100, 100 days goes away. You can accept a motion to continue if they want to come back and provide additional information with regard to the variance, so that they would toll that hundred day period, or, or they can move forward tonight. Or they can withdraw. Absolutely, yeah. that's okay. one of their options. So we have a continued public hearing, Nine Rogers Road, the estate of Phyllis Clark, for a variance under Section 195.9 of the Chelmsford Zoning Bylaws, conformity for lot area. Okay. Okay. We'll be back the, uh, February seventh. February seventh. February seventh. So when was the application <coughs> filed? We have to November thirteenth. Hundred days. Is right. It? So we want to get an extension of that time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that comfortable with an extension at this point? Yeah. Till February seventh, we'll extend. And do you need a written? Yeah, you can do. For you can send it. In. I can send it in later. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Do it till towards the end of February, so we can write the decision and everything. Yeah, end of February. Yeah. You do have 14 days after the board votes to act, even, even <coughs> if you do it on the 99th yeah. day, but you have 14 days afterwards to oh, actually okay. file. I'd do it anyway in cases weather, et cetera, et cetera. True. Uh, you know, yeah. that's true. So just get the just get the extension longer. We'll do. Yeah, thank you. Oh, right, thank you. Uh, uh, no more. We're really not taking public comment. Um, I, I think I understand. I, I just wanted to saying. make sure that the members were able to drive by it because that's been said at the last couple meetings, and I just want to make sure that we had the opportunity to drive by the property. If that's all you have. So And I have, I don't know if everyone has, but if you haven't, if you could before the 7th, yes, that would be good. Uh, so, could I have a motion to continue Nine Rogers Road for a variance till February 7th? I'll make a motion to continue Nine Rogers Road uh, for the variance. Uh, till the February 7th meeting. Second? Second. We have a second. Yay. All in favor? Yep. All right. right, Mr. Chairman, that's all you needed me for, right? No. Um, yeah, I think we're good with all that. I, I did want to talk to you uh, at another time about uh, Board of Appeals School. Maybe yep. we could take a time and, and just go over. A few Just guidelines. to jump in on that, um, our next meeting will have this and two other applications, and that's it. And I was hoping to invite Paul back for um, roles and responsibilities, and, uh, um, defensible decisions, whatever um, you would like. So work session. I'm available that night. Okay, so that sounds like a good idea. We'll look forward to that. All right. We get Thank to you all. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Take it Bob. easy. Thanks, Sean. We have a new public hearing this evening. 14 Robert Street, <coughs> Kristen Treacy, seeking a special permit under 195.8 E2 to construct a 7 by 39 addition, which will increase the pre existing non conforming structure front setback lot area by more than 20%. Good evening. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, I'm Brandon, Kristen's husband. Um, so I think that the agenda might be a bit off because I think that the actual issue is the setback and not the square footage increase, because the square footage increase is only going to be 143 square feet, which is not more than 20%. And I, our denial, I think, was for, uh, for the setback, because it won't be the 40 feet that it should be. I'm going to see if I have the denial letter right here in front of me. That's all mine. I thought I saw conformity crossed out here. Yeah, conformity was crossed out. Yeah. It's here. OK. So we're only looking at yeah. the setbacks. Okay. Yeah, thank you. you. Look up at the letter. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. See, yeah. conformity's yeah, crossed okay. out. Okay. Are we, uh, yeah. are we in trouble? <laughs> you did a one I line. A no initials and date, but you know, it's good. Sean did it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <I'm> just... <laughs> the new guy. <laughs> are we in trouble with our advertising on this then? Yeah. No, as long as it's, it's less. It's yeah, less. right, that's true. As long as yeah. it's less. Okay. <sighs> okay, Start. so the, uh, yeah. The existing oh. setback is uh, 38.4 feet, and the proposed setback will be 31.9 when we add the uh, small 143 feet to the front of the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're gaining 
Well, we're gaining five inches or some crazy thing. No, we're gaining <laughs> we're gaining about seven feet on the front of that six. But, but out of uh, you're extending your nonconformity by five inches. Uh, five feet. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I think it's seven seven what? feet. No, it's no seven feet. Oh, 31. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. 31 I, to 30, I wrote about yeah. seven. Yeah. <laughs> okay, seven feet. At least there's a reason now. Okay. <laughs> Shave five inches off the side of it and forget about it. <laughs> So we also have a, a porch on the um, on the front as well that will extend the the same uh, size as the or the same um, distance. To distance. Distance. Thank you from the front, um, but that won't be living area. Okay. Uh, if you guys want to sit down for a minute, we'll see if there's any opposition or sure. comments from the uh, <coughs> audience. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone like to speak in favor or opposition to this application this evening? Seeing none, is she the bodyguard back there to make sure they don't get up? <laughs> <laughs> She's the muscle. <laughs> you guys sit right down there. <laughs> um, okay, do we have any questions? Uh, Regarding this application? Nope. Um, I'll make a motion to close. No, no, no. We oh. have letters. I do have letters. Oh, how about some letters? We can discuss everything. Uh, the uh, Regarding 14 Robert Street, the police have no concerns. The Board of Health has no comments. And engineering has notes. Erosion control is required in storm drains along Robert Street. These must be installed prior to any earth disturbance. <clears throat> Chumps and Fire Prevention, 14 Robert Street. This office has reviewed the proposal for an addition at 14 Robert Street, finds the following. The entire home, existing new construction, shall be equipped with life safety systems as required by 780 CMR 51, standard for new construction, at the time of application for a building permit. The home shall have hardwired, interconnected smoke, carbon monoxide, and heat detectors in all required locations. Three copies of the plans clearly show all required life safety devices shall be submitted to this office as part of the building permit plan review process. This office would approve of this addition with these conditions, and I ask that the board make this letter part of their approval process. Respectfully submitted, Dan Kostafis, Captain, Chumpsett Fire Department. That is the end of my letters. Mm. <clears throat> Questions uh, from the board? Hmm. Pretty straightforward. Yes. Make a motion to close. Motion to close the public hearing. Second by Steve. All in favor? Aye. 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 You take this up. I uh, don't see any any concerns really. It's uh, I'll make a to be I'll now. make a motion to accept this permit to um, allow for the decreased setback and approve the plans as submitted. With the letters. With the letters. Second. Second by Steve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck with it. Thank you. Right into the mic. Clear. That's it. You're going to go the wrong way. Like easy. Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Our next hearing is 41 First Street. Frank Gorman is seeking a special permit under 195.8 E2 to construct a 3,300 square foot addition to create a two family dwelling to a pre-existing non-conforming structure, front setback, which is over the 30% allowable by right. And is this a house built prior to 1935? 38, yes. 38. And we have plans that it shows it has met the 600 foot requirement and the, uh, the other, what was the other one? I can't remember. 600 feet per unit. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Another one. It's, it's a two-family by right per zoning. It's RC. Oh, okay. Thank so you. it doesn't need... Um, right, that's yeah. what I thought. And that's not in front of us. That's what I think Brian was trying to make sure. Oh, right. Nothing, that's no not part of that in front of us. No. Okay. No, so no, that's no, already no, been the accepted. Right. Not the way it's about. all been accepted. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Plus, it's going to be big. <laughs> and he has the setbacks. Yes, I just have some more handouts. Mm -hmm. no, I don't have a plot. Yeah, so the, the color plot 
Pat Flaherty worthy this color. Although he uses crayons. <laughs> yeah, he colors better He's than old anybody. School. <laughs> any of the engineers. All right, so I'm gonna, um, For the record, um, my name is Matt Hammer with Lamplex Engineering and Surveying up in Lowell, 10 George Street. I'm here this evening uh, representing Southern End Realty um, for a uh, special permit increasing uh, the existing square footage um, per section 195-8 um, section E uh, subparagraph D which um, because our lot is greater than 20,000 square feet um, the allowance on the expansion is 30% the um we have a stamp plan yeah that's what i was going to say this yeah we submitted stamp, stamp plans stamp originally plans this is uh more yep. of an yep. exhibit um okay. no that's fine i just want to make sure yeah, we have stamp. received it so um so mr gorman um instead of removing the existing house the existing house is in pretty good condition I don't know if folks have been by the house. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Killed the printer here. Oh, yeah, that's all I do is print. I could have brought it up on Street View for you. <laughs> well, this is Street View, actually. <laughs> uh, so there's the stamp plane up there. Uh, so, um,. Um, as was stated, um, in order, as a, you, you can put a duplex on a property as long as it's greater than uh, 80,000 80, square feet in this district, uh, in this lot is 87,000, greater than 87,000. No, this, it's a 20,000 square foot lot, RC. Right. But the, um, oh yeah, that's right, that's in another district, excuse me about that. <laughs> yes. Um, so it is a. Uh, as a right to do the uh, two family, but we still need to come in and get the special permit uh, for the expansion uh, greater than the 30%. So we're going to leave the existing structure. Um, so there's an existing structure here. There's a wetland area in the back. And the lot is 87,000 square feet approximately. We can get away with the 13 one on the side uh, in an RC. Side setback. I don't know what an RC setback is. I should look here. I'm sure so it's the here. 12. So okay. So the proposed structure, um, the exposed proposed expansion, is going to consist of a <coughs> a garage coming off of the existing dwelling, which will meet the um, side setback requirement, and then we're going to propose a um, another unit to create the duplex, which is shown here. And then there'll be a proposed driveway to that duplex. The, um, the, the development is within 100 feet of the wetland in the rear. So we've already gone <laughs> forward and uh, received an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission and that filing was unanimously, unanimously approved by the conservation for the work. Uh, part of that work involves some uh, drainage mitigation and uh, minimal grading uh, for that addition to go on. Um, we also have some elevations that I've handed out showing the, the expansion. I know that um, Mr. Gorman's also uh, spoken to the immediate abutters about the expansion, shown him, shown the abutters what he was planning to do, and um, I know 
from speaking with Mr. Gorman that they were uh, <coughs> supportive of the uh, expansion the way it's shown on the plans. Kind of deep with those, uh, not that's my business, but the, those garages going to be all right down there? It's up on a hill, kind of. Yeah, you, you, you it? yeah it's fun. Want me to pull up street view? It's not you know, the best I, I render. Really just, uh, I remember it. I went by and looked at it a, a few times, and I didn't think it was that high up. I mean, it, it doesn't matter, honestly. Honestly, Chairman, the rendering's not that great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the uh, architect the did the best they could to depict the drive under scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but if you notice on the grading plan itself, it ends up being level on this side here. And then it's just uh, up and grade on this side here. So it's... It's going to work. It's going to work. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> well, it's, it's the 20%. This is also a, um, a view from the street, which is, this is the existing dwelling here. This is the garage extending off the side. And this is the addition. Creating the duplex. So the, um, the existing um, floor area is approximately 3,000 some odd square feet. And the proposed, um, the proposed uh, expansion is uh, 2,720 square feet. Is that including the garage as well? Um, yes, that is, excuse me. Yes, that it does include the garage. So it's approximately, it's comparable for what's there. It's, so that would be a... 100% um, increase? An 88% increase. 88% yeah. increase. Yeah. can say that the, uh, <coughs> the entire rear of the property is going to be maintained the way that it is now. All this. The conservation area. Well, protected by buffer zones to that isolated wetland in the rear, yeah. Okay. I'm going to uh, read in the letters first and see that there's any issue before we go uh, into the audience. Regarding 41 First Street, uh, the police have no comments. The Board of Health has no comments. Captain Dan wrote a letter, and so did Engineer. <clears throat> Regarding 41 First Street, uh, from the Chelmsford Fire Department, this office has reviewed the proposal for an addition and conversion to a two-family home at 41 First Street and follows the following. The entire building existing in new construction shall be equipped with life safety system as required by 780 CMR 51 standard for new construction. The home shall have hardwired internet and smoke, carbon monoxide, and heat detectors in all required locations. Three copies of the plans that clearly show all required life safety devices shall be submitted to this office as part of the building permit plan review process. Construction shall comply with plans submitted and approved by this office on December 6, 2018. The applicant shall be required to apply for addresses to the Town of Chelmsford E911 Committee and to its chairperson, Town Clerk Patricia Druez. This office would approve this addition with these conditions, and I ask that the board make this letter part of their approval process. Respectfully submitted, Daniel Kostafas, Captain, Chelmsford Fire Department. I have some engineering notes uh, regarding 41 First Street. Contact the sewer division for a sewer permit connection to the municipal sewer system is required. Financial and connection requirements <coughs> will be coordinated with the DPW sewer division. Consideration should be made to install roof drain drywalls. Erosion control in the street and along the back of the property is required. A road opening permit may be required for work within the right of way. Contact the DPW highway division for all necessary permits. That is all the letters. If you want to uh, sit down, we're going to uh, see if anyone else likes uh, or dislikes your uh, application. Is there anyone else who would like to comment on this application this evening? 
seeing them. Let's comment on this picture. Um, yes. How old is this picture right here? Because uh, because I went by last last week and this isn't what it looks like. There's, there's a lot of foundation work done. That's correct. Um, so um, when Ms. and Mr. Gorman can speak to this directly, uh, if need be, but it's my understanding that uh, Mr. Gorman submitted an application package to the building department, got ambitious to start excavating uh, for doing the foundation work, and then was trying to um, he panicked a little bit because he was trying to beat a weather cold, a cold snap that was upcoming at the time and then inadvertently put in the foundation. Oh, uh, okay, the cold addition. snap. Good one. Inadvertently <laughs> okay. put in the foundation. So, uh, Mr. Yeah, Gorman I've, is. I've it. heard stories like that. So, I know it was at his own risk right, to do right. so. Um, but, you know, he was, I don't know what. what you want to speak to this? Yes, Mr. Gorman is here. Yes, boy. My name is Frank Gorman, Drake at Mass. Uh, we bought this property back in the middle of the summer at auction, and when we purchased it, uh, we were actually going to just renovate the existing home. Then we looked at the zone and realized that you could add an additional unit on to make it a two-family home, which is something that we specialize in. We've done probably maybe over 100 or just two families, probably 400 single-family homes over the last 40-some-odd years. Uh, when we applied to the town or went to the building department to find out what the regulations were, we realized we could do a two-family. We submitted the application, then realized we had to go to the conservation board. So we applied to the conservation board and got the order of conditions, waited the two, three months, the advertising, the whole nine yards. When that was approved, we thought that was the end and we just had to go for a building permit. We went down to the office, filed all the proper paperwork, paid the 3000 or so fee, whatever it was, and f filled the application out. And that was the week or sometime around Thanksgiving when that cold front came and everything went down to the single digits. We thought we were all set. We didn't think there was any problems whatsoever. And then I got a call from a, I think his name was Marty from the building department. Correct. And he says, oh, the, we were reviewing the building permit to issue the permit, and we realized that you're in a zone that you have to go in front of the board for a special permit. And I said, Mr. I can't remember his last name, but Marty, I said, uh, yeah. Alan. I said, uh, oh, my God. I said, my sons are over there right now, and they dug the, the you know, cleared out the lot and got it going. Because we had a water problem in the back. The whole cellar was flooding anyway, so they went ahead and started digging to relieve some of the water. And when they were doing that, uh, he said that to me, and that was the day they were putting farms in to pour the footing. And I said to Mr. Allen, I said, well, what do we do now? And he says, well, you're at your own risk. You really shouldn't be doing what you're doing. I said, well, what do we do? He said, you have to file an application. I said, what does that involve? And that's when I went down to the building department. I spoke to Colleen, and uh, she w went through everything with me and another lady, I can't remember her name. And then I got a call from the building inspector, and he says, you really shouldn't be doing what you're doing. You're at your own risk right now. And I said, mm, I get that. I guess I jumped ahead a few days because of the cold snap coming in. I will take 100% responsibility for what happened. We did do it. We put the footing in, and the cold front came. We backfilled it, and I actually said to the, the building department, I said, that's it. We're not going to do anything now that we have to go to the board. We filed the application to be here tonight. Uh, we're supposed to be here, I think, last week, but there was an advertising problem, so it was put off till tonight. And yes, I'll take 100% responsibility for what was done there. I don't know what to say. We did it. It's not something we do. It's not custom what we do. I'm 400 plus houses in my career. It's not what we do, but it just happened to be the circumstances. We had no idea we had to come in front of your board for a special permit. Otherwise, I would have just followed the normal, normal procedure. We do enough building that we don't have to rush. It was a rush strictly to get in the ground before the frost came and that's the reason we did it and we're doing it when the, when I found out from the building department so I took the risk and I said to my sons I said guys just backfill it finish it take well, care of it footing, you're not at foundation no the foundation very limited we did the foundation too but the front was the side that no the, you have to understand if you look at the picture of the old house 
I, yeah. I didn't go by. I know John. You had you had to jack it. The old house was a mess when we bought it. It was a nice house outside. It looked good, but it needed a lot of work. The previous person who owned it didn't do what he was supposed to do by code. We're bringing it all up to a code. Fire department, building, separate sewer, separate water. I've already talked to the water commissioner. And, you know, we do things the right way, except this particular one we jumped the gun on because of the frost, and we had no idea we had to be here. So if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, my determination was made after viewing uh, the excavation that was done over there uh, was allow him to continue at, a, at the own risk because of the proximity of other the households. Hazard of having an open hole. And the hazard of having an open hole. Um, he was notified that it would be at his own risk, and he, he was also notified that, would, that there would be a, a penalty that we do uh, issue for working without the benefit of a building permit. Uh, so that's about where we're at with the, the, the permit the side of things right now. Okay, so that's really a side for us. We don't have to, it's, not, it's a non issue to us, anyways. <coughs> so anyone else who would like to speak in favor or opposition to this project? Seeing none. I uh, can I take a motion to close the public hearing. I can motion to close. Well, before we close, I'd like to ask Sean. If you a have question. further questions, that's absolutely no, fine. Well, Sean, uh, are you going to like charge them double for this or something, or what's the deal? Um, we have recently uh, adjusted our fee schedule, and uh, it is uh, triple fees. Okay. Um, we had a little Would thing. Did you fall under that? Wasn't that J one? Excuse me? Would he fall under that as it is uh, January 1st? Yeah, uh, it, it, yes, sir. Your interpretation. The permit hasn't been issued yet, so, yes. All right. Hmm. Well, can I just tell you a little story from the planning board? I love It's really short. <laughs> um, we, we had a similar situation on the planning board where we issued a permit to, um, to build an office building, and it was a two-story office building, and the gentleman that built it built three stories. So, um, so... You know, he, he, what basically happened is I asked him why he built three stories, and he said, oh, he read the plans wrong. So, so we all, like, had a little chuckle, whatever. And um, at the same time, they were doing some road improvements on Barricka Road and Golden Cove Road. Um, so we made him uh, cover one quarter of the cost of the road improvements because it was right near his project. And that came out to be a little over $25,000 which he had to pay up before he got a CO. Um, so, so I'm just wondering if this is the same type deal. I didn't think that was your best story. <laughs> Not my best story. Well, it's a true one. So uh, I've, I've engaged with uh, some conversations with some neighbors over there. Mr. Gorman has, has uh, spoken with uh, quite a few of the neighbors. Uh, and we've discussed uh, quite a bit of uh, screening issues and privacy issues with the neighbors that, that he is going to address. I don't see a lot of give back to the town that could possibly be there, but keeping the neighbors happy, I, th I think, is uh, uh, probably Well, I think whether thing. it's the, the double or the triple fee, that's, that's the penalty for starting without a permit. That, that, is, that is given to us by the state. He had some leverage with the unnamed individual. Uh, and could could uh, you know he, they could set the fees that were comfortable for him, but our but I don't think that's our stuff anyways. I no. think that's strictly an yeah, administrative. Yeah, where where would we would be charging triple fees would would be with the the foundation side of things, because uh, that's all the work that was has begun. Uh, oh, he could get a foundation permit, so that would be the. Uh, oh, okay, uh, well, I have one little short story. Oh my goodness! I got a call from Miami uh, last week, <laughs> and it was in a butter, and he was in the hospital. And he couldn't make it to the meeting, and he just said that um, the house was just um, too big and it didn't belong on the road, and and that's the end of the story. The butter called you directly. Yes. But I'd uh, suggest, if that is the case, I didn't realize this gentleman was not supposed a letter. He was supposed to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't able. To yeah. Make that's it. he couldn't make it. Okay. The letter was very helpful, but I yeah. appreciate the testimony. So we can uh, now close the public hearing if other people are done. Oh, I have to have to at least a 10-second pause in case Charlie thinks of something no, else. No, I'm all set. Thank okay. you. Very much. All right. I'll make a motion now to close the public hearing. I will quickly second that. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye.
<laughs> so you can probably sit down because we're we're closed now. So. Okay. Uh, I can take this up. It's uh, it's big, but it meets all the setbacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a big property too. It's a very big property. All of it's facing the street. Yeah. Yeah. There's, it's not a wide property. It's a. Correct. Correct. The, for the people who went by, how does this work with the neighboring properties? Uh, it's a little bigger than the rest of them, but it still would fit in, I would think. There's a, there's definitely uh, some eclectic housing down there. There's some bigger additions that have been done. I'm, I'm going to butter up the street, and I think it looks good. <laughs> You're certainly welcome to say. Would you feel more comfortable looking at it if you haven't seen it? Do you want to uh, continue, which is really a difficult thing to ask. Uh, at this point, I think the, the weather is a factor again. I would not okay. feel the need to. I mean, I've been by, but I was not by. Uh, I think I was by at the time of the auction, actually. It was the last time I went by, but I'm familiar with it. Would you want to uh, propose a motion? Doing it, aren't you? I'm waiting for you, Charlie. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve um, the special permit under Section 195-AE2 to construct a 33,000-foot addition on 41 First Street. Pardon me? 3,300. Oh, oh, sorry, 3,300. His eyes lit up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need a bigger foundation. <laughs> so what stories? What are we on? <laughs> Continue, I apologize. I'm all done. With the letters? Oh, w uh, in, in response to, the, yeah, yeah, keep in mind the letters. Uh, do I have a second? Second? Yeah. Oh, all in favor of approving allows the development. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Unanimous. Good Thank luck with much. it. Good night. Uh, Yeah, right. <coughs> I'm not getting in the way. So we yeah. start, do we have time for a quick story? I'm done. We can take, do you have a story? Band camp? <laughs> <coughs> we do have a story. Uh, Our next application is 14 Erlen Road. Emil Hool is seeking a special permit under 195.8 E2 to construct a new second level addition to a pre existing non conforming structure, front side setbacks, lot area. That is over 30% allowable and a 34 by 24 garage addition that will meet the rear and side setbacks and any other relief that may be deemed necessary. The 34 by 24 garage does meet the rear and side setbacks. I don't know if we need to note that. Good evening. Good evening, Emil Hool. Uh, apologize for not having paintings or drawings. Got all your stuff. Um, <laughs> I did drop them off to Colleen, so. Uh, as you can see, we have an existing non-conforming house. Uh, we're looking to do a second floor and breezeway garage. Um, setbacks on the addition conform with the exception of the frontage. Uh, but it does do parallel with the existing house. It's actually, I think, a four foot setback. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking to seek relief to do the construction. I do, uh, I think, did uh, Don do these plans? Yes. So I do have plans here, so I'd like to look at them. It's a, it's a yes, it shows stuff. the existing as well as the renovation. Yeah, yeah I, I thought you said, uh, you apologize for not having plans. So. Well, well drawings. He didn't color them. <laughs> you didn't color them in. He not color color. I'm not that talented yet. <laughs> And just to add to that, uh, this is not a project for me as a flip house type thing. This is my son's house, so he's going to be doing the um, 
he's going to be living there. You charge him the double, right? right huh? <laughs> More than double. He's with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true statement. He they says, get this on back. as fast as possible. So please, could you always come back? <laughs> can we look at the plot plan again? Uh, yep. Oh, I got it. I got it. It certainly appears to have a little more room than the setbacks would uh, would tell you with the angle of the house. Uh, yeah, that whole area parallel is parallel to the road, but the uh, the lot itself sort of offset, creating that's creating some tight corners. Yeah, the whole area there, the, the design of the lots is similar, <coughs> so. so. Just getting back to the conversation earlier, uh, without the garage, this would be by right, with the garage, it'd still be in front of us just like it is now. 100% going up. Correct. Yep. Okay. We'll talk about that after, but I just wanted to clarify for a good example here. We're not further encroaching on uh, almost anything. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions of uh, Mr. Hull? No. What is the increase over the 30 percent? What percentage are you? That's what I'm looking forward to. Um, I'm not sure that the actual percentage. We're, we're doing a second floor. So, the second so we're actually doubling the size of the house. Okay. So, so yeah. There's several that have done that on that street. Yeah, it's a common Westlands yeah. thing. Yeah, it is. Didn't you do that for me once? like 160 so. percent <laughs> for the garage. <laughs> Yours look nice. Yours look nicer. Are you yeah, finishing you on top of the garage as well? No, the second no, no, floor? no. Just no. floor. The plans. There is there is a part of the breezeway that has, I think, a closet or something for the bedroom, but other than that, it's it's empty, Just open attic space. space. Yeah. Well, the proposed yeah, like footprint of the addition will increase the size of the structure footprint by 5%. Yeah, so the addition footprint is 816 square feet. All right, then I'll read the letters in. Is uh, anyone here this evening would like to speak in favor or opposition to this application? The benefactor. There is the <laughs> issue. That's why I'm here. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll assume that you've spoken in favor of the application. I have a letter from the Chelmsford Fire Prevention Office, 14 Erland Road, Imahool. This office has reviewed the proposal for an addition at 14 Erland Road and finds the following. The entire home existing in new construction shall be equipped with life safety systems as required by 780 CMR 51, standard for new construction at the time of application for a building permit. The home shall have hardwired interconnected smoke, carbon monoxide, and heat detectors in all required locations. Three copies of the plans that clearly show all required life safety devices shall be submitted to this office as part of the building permit plan review process. This office would approve of this addition with these conditions, and I ask that the board make this letter part of the approval process. Respectfully submitted, Dan Kostafis, Captain, Chumps at Fire Department. I have a letter from the Board of Health with no comments. A letter from Engineering with comments. The proposed addition will be near or possibly over the existing sewer service. The applicant must contact the DPW sewer division to coordinate any necessary actions to preserve or alter the sewer service. A professional land stamp is required on the plan. I thought I saw that. We do have that. Chelmsford <clears throat> uh, Water District has no comments. And that is the extent of my letters. Oh, see one on one. You have the professional stamp somewhere? In the file. I think uh, I saw it on yeah, I didn't see it here. I did not. Got 
put this somewhere? I don't think, I don't think you have the stamp on <coughs> I normally don't miss that. I thought... No, I, I know it was... Who did it for you? Brian Melissi, Whitman and Bingham. So we, I, we could I, do a contingency I, thing here with that. I, uh, do you do, have if you have one? Oh, great, great. Oh, you could sit. Yeah, but it's not stamped, so it doesn't oh, matter. Yeah, I know, I know I have it. Huh? If it's Okay. We could do a contingent on receiving a stamp. Okay. Thank you. I believe. I mean, you know, if it's, if it's not accurate, Brian that's a problem. I was in the office today. I mean, that goes in with the application. Anyways, I think there's a copy with the permit yeah. application. I mean, I went through the file just printed here his first copy yeah. that he sent me. I mean, I can submit a copy, bring one to you if you can't find it tomorrow or whatever. It's not an issue on my end. Okay. <clears throat> Are there further questions for the applicant, for the building inspector? I've, uh, I've driven through the neighborhood. It's very much in character to the additions that have been performed in that neighborhood. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone like to make a motion make a to motion close, to the close the public hearing? Second. All in favor? Uh, All right. Uh, so like someone wants to make a motion. Make a motion to approve the special permit um, for 14 Erland Road with consideration of all the department head letters and with the stamp plans. I would need a second for that. I'll second that. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 You know, that was Thank you. Good luck with it. See you tomorrow morning. Regular <laughs> 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 <Thank you. laughs> <laughs> sale. Thank you. But it's hard to say you have good luck with that when it fails. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, just as an FYI, we spoke with Sean today, uh, calling in and I. And as a building inspector, he's going to determine what the zoning and the uh, law is. And I, I can let Sean uh, go through it if you'd like. But so we're basically going to, need to close the hearing. We spoke briefly. Uh, we do need to close the yeah, hearing. Yeah, yeah. I think we do. do that. Close Make a line? motion to uh, uh, adjourn do. or what, no, not. I mean, we're not going to adjourn. We're not in the executive session, so. What are it's we? not executive session. It's right, no, we're just, we're just discussing. <coughs> it really doesn't affect us. It's just a change in the way that things are going to be done from Sean's. So we, we've discussed it briefly with uh, town council uh, as he was here this uh, earlier this evening, um, and we're going to kind of uh, hold off to, to judgment a little bit on it because we want to have a further discussion. But it has to do with 195.8E2, uh, exactly what we've seen to coming through here a lot. Um, we're trying to make that determination of when a property is just going to go up overhead and over the existing foundation. Uh, to not have to hear that um, because it's an increase of 100%, we automatically hear that. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's not encroaching any further on any setbacks or making the nonconformity any more. Your, um, your interpretation, it's by right of the property to go up. To that would be my interpretation. However, we have not gone by that path. Uh, and Right. It would involve, uh, it involves a lot of costs to the applicant uh, um, who is just... The shape it's in now. Yes, who is just taking a split level, uh, so to speak, and going up a floor. Uh, not going side to side, not front to back. Maintaining roof line. Yeah. Extension. And um, as long as you're not going off that foundation at all, uh, and there's no extra foundation added to that, to the, to the, to the existing building. Uh, but Paul wants to look into it a little further to make sure that uh, we're doing it correctly. Doing it correctly, no, and, and we, it there may be an ordinance change that we have to put in there to do that. Uh, but th that's that's a lo along the lines we're thinking. Well, you know what? So many people are going to be so happy with that. Yeah, I think that's know. a very positive step. And I, I, I just think it we we're not uh, you know f uh, going further uh, outreaching on the setbacks or frontage. Uh, or anything like that, uh, that, that the, the detriment If it had the, been built the day it was the day it was set up, it was built a two-story, and it would be there, and then... Correct, oh, correct. Wow. So what about if they have that bump out, you know, like the... Yeah. The garrison? The garrison well, in the bylaws, it's the... the, the in different towns are different. The, Sometimes that bump out counts as a setback. In, in Chelmsford, it's the foundation. Right. So if you have an overhang, that doesn't count to the setback. Um, however, this may uh -huh. call for a... Um, 
as Sean stated, a bylaw change. Definition. Yeah, uh, either yeah. It's just that, that or maybe moving with that sliding scale, that 10, 20, 30. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe you um, can do it as long as you don't do certain Paul things. Paul helped like write that bylaw. Yeah. Yeah. And, so and <laughs> as we saw, as everybody it. wants to get a second swing at it. As yeah. we yeah. saw tonight, right if, this time. If, <laughs> if this last gentleman was not doing that garage, he was just going up over, that's automatically 100%. And he'd be by right to do it had it had it been the procedure. And we interpret it interpreted that way. And, and the requirements are the full um, stamped plan, which is quite expensive, yeah. and it wouldn't show any change from what's existing. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's right. kind of. Right. You're trying to put, keep a little bit more into the constituents' pocket. Mm -hmm. I right. and, and I, I don't think, uh, to my knowledge, we've denied a second floor. I, I personally believe if you can build here, you, should, you know, no, right. nobody's stopping you from going up. Right. I went back and looked at the decisions and the applications. 100%. Um, we have ne so. never denied one of those. But also, um, you know, those months that we've had 10 applications, 9 applications, 7 to 8 of them are yeah. under this. So it would cut it immensely. Good. We would have seen the one this evening uh, without dimensional requirements because of the garage. Right. right. So it wouldn't, we wouldn't be adding that space. If you'd just gone up, we would not have seen it tonight. Correct. You're still going to have that control if you expand And it. I believe the, the, what, the one before that um, was Street. Just, just above, right? Oh, no, they had a little oh, porch. Did, they had the porch as well. They had the porch. Okay. She was making her nonconformity more nonconformity. I just so think it'll, it'll help speed through. things up a little bit, be a little cheaper yeah, for No, it. I think it'd be nice uh, to not go through the things that are a rubber stamp anyways. Yeah. And it just, it just cost, anxiety, you know. Yep. And time. And time, uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> We're expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Can't afford All to right. And with that, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. Do we have minutes? I, not tonight. No. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. No second of the motion. Oh, okay. Discussion. Third. No. Yeah, discussion. Wait, wait, is there is there a story or anything no. about that? No, <laughs> you know what? So That's sure. it. When you're here, I'm not going to tell any stories. <laughs> it happened. Though. Well, <laughs> twice I tried to make a motion, and the story popped out. <laughs> Gotta give like his little story. outlet. <laughs> he hates them. He does. Yeah. So we right. adjourn. They're folksy. Vote. Yeah, we've. Yes, but does it there. help us? Welcome 2019. Oh, yeah. We are adjourned. <laughs>